all right guys welcome to another video and today we're going to talk about how you can score a 30 on your on your TOEFL and that 30 has a lot of benefits that you might not be able to you know think of right now but it, it really does help you and it's not only just about the admissions process it, it's also about your your whole um uh, you know research assistantship or something if you if you have a good score in your TOEFL speaking section it's going to be a huge uh, you know point of benefit for you when you when you go on to applying for these kinds of positions at the university you're studying in so let's talk about it so like I uh, like, uh, I'm not sure how many of you guys know I got uh, 30 on the speaking section I'm gonna make videos on each section uh, but this is just you know focused on the speaking section and things you can do to get that good-looking 30 right over there all right so let's let's talk about it all right I'm gonna give you a total of seven tips and if you actually use these, I'm sure that most of you should be able to get at least 28 plus, and that's just as good enough, all right? So first off, by the way, I've all, I've, I have them all written down, so you know, just so you know, I, I, I won't forget anything. First of all is the this, this word. Don't use this word when you're actually taking the test. Try to avoid this word. Like, if you spe see me speaking in my videos, I barely use this word. This is not a good way to go. Like the best way you can avoid this is pause for a second or two. That's completely good. But if you're using um a uh, complete uh, like you know every few seconds or so, it's going to make the listener well. He's just not going to be able to understand what what you're trying to say. You know, he's just not going to be able to make any sense out of it. And that's important. You need to know that this um, uh, kind of, you know, degrades your speech and it makes it hard to understand. While you might be thinking, you know, on the back of your mind that, okay, if I, if I you know, some people don't think of it so organically, but what happens is when you're using this word at the back of your mind, you're thinking something, right? You're trying to make sense of which word to use or which way to go or what to say next. And that's completely fine. But instead you could just, you know, wait for a few seconds and, and try that I would I would try to give you a demo but I'm not really I tried before this video I'm not really you know good at using this word uh, I, I kind of totally you know took it out of my speech if, if, if you would say that but try to basically avoid this word you know like um, uh, apples are red um, they are they're good because um well um, do the doctor says you know you should have an apple a day and um, well um, don't do that you know that just looks ugly okay you could just go with something like this apples are apples come in a lot of different colors some are red some are green well they they really are a diverse kind of a fruit and they are very tasty or something like that you know just don't really go doing um and uh that's that's the worst thing you can do to basically you know uh fuck up your score okay let's let's go on to the next point and let's go on to the next point, which is intonation. So a lot of you might not know of this word. A lot of you might know of this word. I'm not sure. But intonation is something that can really help you, you know, boost up your score. And I'm surprised because most people don't really talk about it because some people think that it's an, it's a relatively advanced concept. But I think it, it's, it's like everyone should incorporate in their speech. It makes your speech a little more easier to understand. Let's talk about what it is right now. And, you know, it, it helps in basically grabbing the attention of people. So let's talk about it. First of all, let's let's look it up on Google. Let's see what intonation means, right? So intonation is basically the rise and fall of voice in the speaking. Basically, you're using up cadences in your voice, you could say. So let me just give you an example, a quick example, all right? I'm going to speak a sentence without intonation and then I'm going to speak a sentence with intonation. This is called inductive learning where, where you're going to be learning through an example. All right. So let's let's do this. Uh, if you are going to do this, you are going to probably worsen your condition. OK, I tried to kind of keep my intonation as low as possible, but that sentence was probably a very dull one. All right. Let's let's look at it from another perspective. Right. If you're going to do this, you're probably going to worsen your condition. So this is how, you know, an intonated sentence would sound like you would be using cadences in your voice and you would be employing different kinds of, you know, uh, 
I don't know, pitches, I, I suppose. But it's really about keeping the listener engaged and making your speech a lot more interesting. It's not only, you know, just about the uh, TOEFL exam. It's also about your actual, you know, speeches in life. Wherever you use intonation, you can always see, you know, good speakers are always using intonation. And you want to show the GRE that you are a good speaker, you are a native speaker, and that's that's what you would like to show them, of course, right? So intonation is something you should definitely uh, include. By the way, I just got another point. There are eight points now. <laughs> uh, okay. The next thing that you should look at is actually trying to remember things. Or actually, in fact, not trying, but try to remember things, right? So what, what I mean by this is basically when you're going to be taking the TOEFL, there's going to be a lot of uh, questions in which you're going to be seeing uh, or reading a passage at first, and then you're going to be you know, listening to whatever they say, or even some questions in, in which you just listen to people, and then you have to basically report something or give your opinion on the basis of that. Well, there are a lot of times when we're so busy in, well, during the passage, in writing something or, or doing something, well, we just don't remember what, to, what, what we really heard, right? Sometimes it happens. It happens a lot of times when you're practicing for the TOEFL, you'll, you'll actually notice it if you haven't started practicing. If you have, well, I'm pretty sure that you've already noticed it. This happens because, well, you're too busy trying to, you know, remember something or something else is happening on the back of your mind, or maybe that person speaking on the, uh, on the you know, adjacent seat is kind of too loud and you're, and basically it's, you know, kind of uh, interfering with your thought process. So sometimes this, this thing happens and we don't remember exactly what they said in the video, exactly what the student was saying, and we're supposed to report that again, but we don't remember that. Well, the main emphasis of this point is to kind of try to remember that and not really get you know carried away by the people who are speaking next to you or basically by, by, your, uh, by the thought process that you're having on the back of your mind, maybe something else, maybe you're thinking about something else. So maybe you, you maybe you don't have enough sheets and you have to you know raise your hand get more sheets something like that but don't don't really you know let that overpower you kind of try to stick to the point and try to remember things try to listen to it pay attention all right and the next point is kind of you know just stemming from this point if you however do not remember things and i know that happens sometimes it happens a lot it used to happen to me still happens at times you know when i used to prepare for the TOEFL. but what you can do is actually uh, well, you know, don't speak about the things you don't remember. Well, it's as simple as that. If you do not remember something, instead of using the, you know, whatever you think might have been, you know, true in that case, don't go, uh, don't go with it at all. I think that's the best advice I can give you. Like, try to don't, try to not indulge yourself in that, you know, point. There are a lot of points, probably a 60 second uh, or two minute lecture that you heard or, you know, conversation that you heard. Try to remember some other points and then, you know, push them into this conversation, uh, into this re response of yours. But don't try to just, you know, speak about something random that you think that the speaker might have said, because that's going to hurt your score because they're going to think that you understood it wrong, even though the thing is that you don't remember what you heard or, or you just couldn't maybe you couldn't understand it even but don't try to show it to them that's what you don't want to show the committee that you couldn't understand the sentence so you know try to stay away from that right the fifth point is well you might get cut off right and it happens a lot of times it happens with me it happens with everyone that takes the TOEFL it's perfectly normal the TOEFL uh, you know people who evaluate your responses they know that they are giving you a very meager time, 60 seconds or 45 seconds on most questions. And they are asking you to basically put in content, which is probably worth two or three minutes at least. Even when a native speaker speaks that content, it takes them 45 to, uh, sorry, three to four minutes sometimes. You know, they, they can be lectures or they can be things, you know, like that. They don't expect you to push it all into that 45 second to one minute window. So, it's okay if you get cut off, but try to get all of the important points, like the the crux of the conversation or the uh, lecture. Try to get it all in there. 
make sure that you have like at least 80 85 percent of it in there and you will go for a perfect score regardless of you getting cut off personally i got cut off on the toefl for at least two questions as far as i remember so that's that's completely okay right let's go with the next one and that is practice with a movie or something you know or a youtube video let's say in the background well basically the thing that this is going to help you with is during your speaking section most people are going to be speaking around you and you're going to be hearing all of the things from you know the other people around you it's going to be very hard for you to actually you know sometimes concentrate and if you're not used to that kind of an environment it might affect some people even more adversely than it would some other people right you don't know what kind of a person you are maybe you just cannot handle the pressure that they will why not actually prepare for the worst right so prepare for it like have a movie or a youtube video especially in english if you can uh, running in the background and try to still you know come up with good responses and still give your best responses all right that's one more point let's go on to the next one which is pace your pace is super super important because you need to have a normal pace basically you you cannot go too slow or or too fast you cannot really rush into it you cannot really you know just be so sluggish that the that the listener is kind of bored and he cannot really understand you because you're too slow don't don't do that try to maintain a decent pace you know count your uh, count the number of words you speak i don't know maybe maybe you can listen to sample responses and then count the number of words those guys speak and just compare and contrast you know how many words you are getting if it's anywhere around them that's good enough okay the next point and this is the last point is that well what did i write over here yeah pronunciation so actually you know just just remember this point while i was making the video i was kind of you know listening to some of the toefl responses and you know from the cd and from I was kind of seeing how basically these people evaluate the test. So they were giving reasons why this response was a high level response or why this response was a medium level response or sometimes why this response was a low level response. So one of the reasons was that these people, some of the Chinese people, I think they, they had like a very bad pronunciation. They were pronouncing some word very wrongly. I don't know what it was, but the pronunciation should be, you know, at least somewhere around that word like you cannot you cannot say uh like i think the word was like consolidate she was using console date or something like to, she basically separated the word or something uh, within her speech so try to kind of you know maintain that pronunciation even if you're not perfect you know it's okay but as 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 far as you can take it do that make sure that your pronunciation is right and you know this is kind of a long term thing you cannot really do that in a week or so but still you know try to make sure that well a lot of things help you know tv series and whatever but it's not something that can happen within a week but still try to make sure that your pronunciation is still on somewhere on the mark you know so these are some of the points that i think you should really incorporate uh, by the way this advanced point intonation it is really important it is really unique i think if you add it your speech will be really spiced up your pace should be again important these are some of the very important ones the um and whatever you know uh, um uh, try to try to stay away from these okay these will really help you get that good looking 30 on your profile on your toefl and i hope this video helps you by the way if you need to get in touch with me directly you know uh catch me on my instagram you can you can actually you know talk to me that's the best place to actually you know get in touch with me and discuss whatever you want to i am always available on instagram and well if there's you know I, I basically post whatever happens like my whole application process is going to be posted over there in my story or something so you can see that so you know it's it's all going to be up there again i'll try to put the link in the description and if there's anything else that i missed maybe you can mention it in the description so that other people can you know benefit from that and in the in the comments down below sorry and well kind of yeah if, if this video helped you out do like this video and give me a thumbs up subscribe whatever i'll see you in the next one